Hi, welcome to the Signal Path. I've been a little bit busy lately and didn't have a chance to make a video last week, but I have been preparing for some interesting analog and RF circuit design tutorials that will be coming up in the next few weeks, and those should be suitable for the course that I'm teaching at Columbia University in New York City. For today, I wanted to talk a bit about some embedded projects, some digital circuits, and some pre-assembled boards that you can buy from uh, different manufacturers, more specifically from SparkFun Electronics. They have a whole bunch of uh, different products for you to assemble together and program and connect to build bigger and better projects. Specifically, I'm going to talk about a 9 degree of freedom uh, sensor kit as well as a, a serial enabled RGB matrix. So I'll talk about how they work and what the principal operation is and I have written some code and have modified some other people's code uh, to do some demo so that I will make that code available online so you can download that code and uh, run it yourself and um, basically repeat the experiment that I'm doing here. Every once in a while I will pick a few of my components that I have in my lab like these two and then we'll do the similar thing that way we'll get some programming, uh, some embedded electronic programming also involved in these tutorials and not just analog circuits. So let's get started. So here is SparkFun's 9 degree of freedom uh, sensor board. It can sense acceleration in, th in three directions as well as uh, angular velocity in three direction and magnetic field. So it has three different types of sensors on board and they're all connected together to a central microcontroller. This board is one version old so it uses two different chips uh, for getting three dimensions of the gyroscope together. Their new, their new version of this board uses only a single chip for each of those sensor types. Uh, but this one has a single chip for measuring magnetometer or magnet, uh, magnetic heading and also a single chip for measuring uh, acceleration. All the information is combined and collected by an Atmel processor in the center. There is a little JST connector for connecting a lithium polymer battery to this. Because the entire board runs from 3.3 volts, it makes it very easy to power it with a single LiPo battery. There's a little on and off uh, switch, a reset, and uh, a whole bunch of passives to make all of these things connect together. So depending on the firmware or the software that's running on this Atmel board, you can do some pretty sophisticated um, uh, functionality from this little board. For example, you can write the necessary software to turn this into an AHRS or an attitude and heading reference uh, system board. So it gives you an absolute position of this board in space so airplanes, for example, use AHRS to get their heading um, and, and uh, use a whole bunch of sensors similar to these to accomplish that. The only interface to this board is this little connector here, which uses a serial interface, uh, RX, TX, CTS, and DTR, and of course, Grand and VDD, to connect to the outside world. So this is compatible with one of the other products, which is this little guy. Uh, this is an FTDI, to, uh, FTDI chip which converts RS-232 to USB. So you can directly make this with this board like so. And now you can connect the, the USB connected to your computer. And if you have the correct firmware software running on this microcontroller, then you can download the information uh, from the sensors, uh, the raw data information from the sensors, or for example, something like an AHRS. But then you can do something um, a little bit more interesting than that. You could, uh, you could use one of their Bluetooth uh, modules like this, which is also compatible and can be connected directly to this board. So if you do that and use a, a lithium polymer battery, for example, like this one, and combine all of these things together, then you have a wireless AHRS module um, available to you so you can attach this to, uh, for, for example, something that's moving around or maybe on a head-mounted uh, unit so that as you rotate your head you can tell uh, with, you can create some maybe some uh, virtual reality software that basically the possibilities are endless so what I have done is that I have taken a code that was written uh, for an AHRS uh, software for this and I've modified it a little bit to make it uh, a bit easier to interface with a computer and then I collect the data uh, through Bluetooth and I use MATLAB to create a 3D plot of an airplane and then uh, you can actually see the airplane uh, heading and direction change as I rotate this in free space so we can do that experiment right now so all I'm doing is I'm connecting the Bluetooth directly to this I've downloaded the software into this which you can by the way upload because this has a built-in bootloader you just connect it back onto this connect it to USB use an Arduino software which I'm sure uh, many of you have used before and upload the program into this I've made both the MATLAB 
and the Arduino program for this available on the website. So you can download it and give it a try. So I'm going to assemble this, connect it to the computer, and we'll see how it works. So here's the assembled uh, package all together. In the middle, there's a lithium polymer battery just connected directly to the connector, and the Bluetooth set uh, is connected also directly to the board. So this entire thing is uh, fully self-contained, and I've already programmed uh, the AHRS uh, code into the Atmel microprocessor, which is available on the website now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn it on. So if I turn it on using the switch, like so, you can see uh, it starts uh, starts up, does a s calibration at the beginning, and on this side there is a the, on the Bluetooth there is a, a red light that's blinking. It means that the, there is no connection has been established yet. So I'm going to put this down on the table because it needs to be in a resting position when the calibration happens. I'll press the reset button, then I'll start up the MATLAB code and we will see it in action. So I'm going to put it down. Here's the computer. I already have MATLAB running. So I'm resetting the board. And it is uh, just calibrating. So I will now run the first part of this code in MATLAB which just initiates the serial port and a connection has been made and I will then run this and maximize it like so. So let me zoom in a little bit. So here you go, you can see a plane that's uh, facing the opposite direction. So now as I rotate this, you can see how the plane follows this motion completely. Remember this is completely over Bluetooth, everything is wireless here. So I can rotate this, you can see the plane will rotate with this, the other direction. I can uh, also go forward like that and back. I can also go completely upside down and the plane will of course stay upside down and then I can rotate in any direction and the plane will completely follow every movement of this board. So there's a lot of math that's happening behind the scene here. The micro, the Atom microprocessor is doing a lot of calculations and uh, does that in order to calculate the HRS. The code in MATLAB that's generating this is also quite interesting. It was written by, believe by, originally by a Russian um, fellow back in 2002. His name and information is in the code. I've modified the code just a little bit to make it uh, easier to work with this board. But otherwise, everything is pretty self-explanatory. Whenever I could, I added some comments so you can figure out how that code works. I'm assuming since a lot of you guys might already be engineers, you're probably pretty um, uh, handy with MATLAB to begin with. So here's the second product I want to talk about. It's an 8x8 RGB LED matrix. So each of these individual pixels has three LEDs built into it, red, green, and blue. By combining the light uh, at different intensities from those LEDs, you can create pretty much any color. Now if you only turn the LEDs on and off, you have three colors, so you have eight possibilities, including when all of them are turned off. Now, because this is an 8x8 array, and each of them has 3 LEDs in it, so that's 64 times 3. Obviously, you're not, going, you're not going to interface with this using 64 times 3 different unique wires. That would make it ex impos virtually impossible to connect to anything and have this useful in any way. So what people do is that they use, basically, a row and column approach. So you activate an entire row, for example, and then you activate a specific column and the intersection of the row and the column will target a one individual pixel then you can turn that pixel on and off so how can you turn all of them on at the same time well in reality you can't you cannot turn all of them on at the same time but if you draw a frame fast enough meaning draw the ones you want very very quickly with very little delay in between and do that do the entire LED matrix uh, maybe over 60 times a second then your eyes can tell that all the lights are not on at the same time. Pretty much every display used today uses that time multiplexing approach and takes advantage of the human persistence of vision um, property to accomplish and fool your eye in thinking that all of this is on at the same time. So in order to take care of uh, all the row and the column lighting up and having the software run in the background, make sure that everything is correct, they have, uh, the SparkFone has made a little backboard that this uh, LED, this matrix mounts on top of this, uh, this board right here. Then they have a bunch of components at the back that will take care of all the things I just described. They have an Atmel microprocessor here. They have a, a group of shift registers and some Darlington drivers to drive 
each individual column or row and then light the individual LEDs that you want. All they require is a serial SPI interface. Now SPI interface uh, requires a, a few wires to complete uh, communication. SPI is a unidirectional uh, per pin interface, meaning that every pin on, a, on an SPI is only a one directional uh, pin. So it has ground, it has chip select, so you can uh, enable or disable this. It has data in, data out, clock and 5 volts. SPI is one of the simpler interfaces to use because every pin is only uh, unidirectional and because the clock is transmitted by the master. So I, I, I just wanted to talk very briefly about this, but I would like to hear in the feedback if you guys would want to know exactly how the circuit works because I can walk through it and describe the fundamental operation and how everything works together and draw, draw your diagram and walk through it. I just wasn't sure if that would be interesting enough. So I just wanted to show that this exists. So let me know in the comment section if you'd like me to do something like that for future videos. So what this microcontroller does is that it comes pre-programmed from Sparkfun Electronics and all you need to give this thing is a 64 byte frame. So since there are 64 lights, you can send it a 64 uh, byte frame telling it exactly what color you want each of these LEDs to be lit. So all you need to do is to send the 64 bytes in a row, tell it which LEDs you want to light up and it will automatically take care of all of the communication and everything else internally and that image will be displayed until you send it a new 64 byte of data to draw a new frame. So that makes using this much, much simpler. If you wanted to use the LED matrix on its own, you would have to build this circuit first program and then have uh, some interface with that circuit, basically what we have right here. So in order for me to do a demo for you, all I've done is that I've connected the chip select, the data in, the clock and the 5 volts and ground into this board coming from a different board. I haven't connected anything to the data uh, output of this board and the reason is because the only, the only reason the data out exists is if you want to daisy chain these. So for example, let's say I have two of these side by side, so I have one here and one right next to it. I can send a 64, a, a, a 64 frame of data for the first one and then send another 64 frame of data which will then push the data from this one onto the next one and fill this one with a new 64 data. So I can have a whole bunch of these in a row and then a draw, and draw a very, very long, long message or have a, a big frame of data that I can display on these. So these are basically cascadable. That's why there is a data output even though it's not necessary for a single unit operation. On the board side, uh, I was playing around with something and I happened to have one of these uh, boards lying around. This board has a PIC microcontroller on it, which is, I believe, an 18F2455. Uh, so I have programmed this PIC microcontroller and you can see the only thing that's connected to it is just a, the, the wires that go directly to this. So it's, this thing has a built-in hardware SPI, which I'm using to send commands to, the, to this unit. It has a little crystal oscillator, a little voltage regulator, and it has also uh, a pair of a Darlington driver, which I was using for a different project. Maybe we can talk about that some other time. So I can program, I can uh, power this guy up using uh, 12 volts, and then that will pro power this guy up using 5 volts. And there is a code that I have written and uh, downloaded into the PIC already, which then displays something funky on, on this. I have made the code for this. Uh, also available on the website, so you can see how simple it is to write a code that does something. So let's see what that code does. I'm going to uh, take this guy. I'm going to turn my uh, Regal power supply on. Wait for it to boot, and then I'm going to connect this. I'm going to set my uh, power supply to 16 volts, and then 16 volt mode, and then 12 volts and I will turn it on. So, here we go. So let me turn this light above off. So there, there it is. So all it is, is it's a little, basically a little bouncing pixel. So this pixel in the middle just bounces off the sides of the wall and it goes all different colors and shape and you can see a, a cross axis that follows that pixel in the center. I don't know how well that would show up on the uh, on the screen for this camera, but you can see that you, you can display all, all kind of interesting uh, patterns and messages on this. The code to generate something like this is very, very simple, so that's why I have included that code, so you can see how easy it is to do this. So this is just an example of uh, the kind of things that I have available here in the lab. I have 
I've done a lot of embedded projects in the past, so I can talk about different things if you guys are interested. Uh, so just was just a practice run to see what you guys think about it. So uh, let me know in, uh, uh, in the comment section if you like uh, more of these or more detail on these type of videos, and uh, we'll be glad to do it.